the age-old interview question that I'm sure many of you will have heard of before, is medicine an art or a science? Hello everyone, my name's Ollie. I'm a second, no, I'm a third year medical student at Warwick Medical School in the UK on the graduate entry programme. The concept of medicine existing as either an art or a science or somewhere in between has been tossed around at interviews for year after year after year after year and I get asked a lot how to tackle this kind of question. It's difficult because it's an abstract question right? There's nothing really grounded about what we're being asked. But the way that we tackle questions like that is by beginning with some definitions. As long as we define our terms properly, we're going to be okay. So what do we mean by art to begin with? Now, art is generally accepted, depending on who you ask, to be the application of human ingenuity, creativity, the sort of je ne sais quoi, in a process which then leads to a product or a result that other humans are capable of appreciating and responding to in some way. The way I like to think of it is that art pieces or forms of art are usually intended to provoke an emotional response in a viewer of some sort. The term science, on the other hand, usually refers to a systematic approach, that's a key part of the definition, observing and experimenting within the universe to understand the objects that physically exist within it and we can interact with, as well as discerning the rules that govern what is and isn't allowed to happen. That's how I would think about it. And the distinction is that science tends to deal with, ideally, impersonal and objective facts, things that are true no matter what anyone thinks about them. However, obviously in practice, for medical practitioners, this presents a not so small problem. And I actually find it, just as a, a complete side note, very interesting how often the ideas of art and science are pitched kind of artificially in opposition to one another because based on the definitions that we've just talked through they're not even really comparable let alone existing as antagonists to one another they concern very different things but that doesn't mean that the results can't overlap just for example one of the most important parts, maybe the most important part of medical diagnosis is getting a good history from a patient. And in order to do that, a doctor has to shape and kind of flow a conversation in just the right way to facilitate the patient telling them the important things that they need to know, avoiding the things that they don't really need to know. And I would actually portray it as quite similar to acting. You're almost pretending to have a conversation, but it's completely different to how you would normally interact with someone. You're very much steering and shaping exactly what you want to happen. And not only that, but normally you would go on and perform a clinical examination of the appropriate body system afterwards. And the way they taught it to us as medical students, it's effectively learning a dance you're doing a series of movements and interpreting them in just the right way and with enough confidence that the patient doesn't think that what you're doing is fundamentally weird. You have to have enough kind of grace and fluidity as you do it so as to not disturb the patient. There's another side to this process, obviously, which is that health professionals are following a script of sorts. There are decades and decades of scientific research that have gone into what interventions and what protocols get the best response from patients, what the best bedside manner is, what the different doctor-patient relationships are. All of this is well documented and very well researched. And then of course the medical treatments that the patient receives that are deemed appropriate, they are the result almost purely of scientific research when you're talking about pharmacological activity and things like that. And that knowledge, that fact learning, which I would argue probably was more the domain of science because it just relies on observable truths, your knowledge of your anatomy, your physiology, your pharmacology, those things are part of what make an excellent doctor or an excellent health practitioner. You definitely can't do without that element. And you can make a similar set of arguments about something like surgery. If your patient is under anaesthetic, you've eliminated that element of communication. And you have this interplay where the operation, the procedure that that doctor is performing, has been trialed hundreds if not thousands of times and it's well known what process will usually result in the best outcome for most patients. That's science. But then I would find it very difficult, kind of perversely, to, to describe a surgeon reshaping flesh and sculpting 
the tissues and structures of the body as anything less than art. I don't think that would be fair. They're an artist whose medium just happens to be the human body and the things contained within it. We can even take a step back and just examine where the worlds of art and the scientific side of medicine have collided, and they often do. Medicine throughout its history has inspired so many different art pieces, many of them you'll easily be able to think of, and these run with us right the way through to the modern day. One of my favourite examples of this is a Rembrandt piece, it's called The Anatomy Lesson of Dr Nicholas Tupp, I think, or the Dutch equivalent thereof, and this painting illustrates a doctor teaching the musculature of the arm to kind of a group of onlookers, I'm not sure exactly who they are, whether they're medical students or, or public or whatever. But we have this funny situation where it's a work of fiction, it's not based on something that Rembrandt actually saw there and then as far as I'm aware, but it's being rendered by a very talented artist, but fundamentally one who doesn't have the detailed knowledge of anatomy that even the subject of the painting would yet it's a painting about medicine. And we can contrast this quite nicely to one of my other favourites, Andreas Vesalius. He is one of the most famous anatomists of all time. His discoveries, he was only able to communicate at that time through his drawings and his writings. His works did away with a lot of the Galen-based um, theories that were rampant at that time. But the work of Vesalius and his writings and his drawings still inform a lot of medical education that happens today because they're just so good. So pieces of art like that, and remember that they are pieces of art, they're not photographs, they're not direct tissue samples or dissections or anything like that. The fact that they're so closely intertwined with the practice of medicine shows that it's so difficult to separate them. And then the last perspective that I thought of is using a more liberal definition of the word art. I think we can all agree that medicine is a science at its nature, it's based almost entirely on science, the theory of medicine, and it draws on multiple elements of other sciences and uses them to deal with the human body. I don't think that much is controversial. However, anyone that spent longer than five minutes in a GP clinic knows that how medicine is actually done as a profession will not always match the kind of black and white statistics and the papers and the research and the trials. So often doctors have to employ rules of thumb or work off their intuition and their judgment. They have to make choices that they think will benefit that particular patient the most. Statistics are wonderful at telling you things about large volumes of other things, but they're not always helpful, and sometimes the person for which they're least helpful is the person that's going to be sat in front of you. And I think it's fair to say that a doctor employing their wisdom, their experience, and their intuition to solve a problem, to navigate it successfully in the dark, I think it's fair to call that an art form. So there we go guys, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion about the idea of medicine as a science and an art. I'd love to hear more from you in the comments. What do you think? Is there anything I've missed? That's where I'm going to wrap it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. Don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free videos like this. Take care and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.